Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about the bench press and understanding that the bench press is in a way a full body exercise, uh, very similar to the same reason that a deadlift is a full body exercise. And I know people say, but you know, there's really only three muscles involved in moving and it's not a full body. Well, I don't mean from a stimulus perspective. I mean from the use and engagement perspective. You know, because by that same logic, a deadlift really only uses about three muscles, maybe four, right? But it's a full body exercise because so many muscles have to contract maximally their stabilizers. Okay, really your glutes and hamstrings are doing most of the work, erectors and quads, some of it, right? But all these other muscles of the back and other things are, are involved. So the bench press really is, if you think of it as a full body exercise and understand that you have to ratchet up super tight to perform a great bench press, uh, it makes a little more sense when you think in those terms. And if you guys recall a video I did a few years ago with a demonstration where I kind of made fun of the way a lot of novices and new people set up on the bench press and bounce their feet around, uh, that video would be a really good watch or just a primer. It's one of my videos on how to bench press. It's the one done in this same room. Uh, you know, you'll see it. You'll see it in the thumbnail. So the same thing holds true here. And a lot of guys, they flop around on the bench. And the reality is when you go to set up on the bench press, watch the way I set up and how fast I do it. But I guys want you guys to notice that I dig my feet into the floor before I even set my traps down. Notice that my quads are contracting and I am using my quads. And if you watch, you realize how tight they are when the bar comes down and I go to press it. Notice my legs contracting, but my feet aren't moving because I'm dug into the ground already. And notice my heels and my feet are behind the knee. So I'm digging them in and sliding down into them. And it doesn't matter whether you go on your toes or you do the heels flat method. I usually prefer heels flat. I get more stability. The idea is the same. You should be doing a leg extension into the floor and you need to be doing it before you unrack. You slide yourself into that position to where your quads have to contract. Your feet are digging hard into the floor and you are contracting your quads just as hard as you do on a 500 pound back squat. Okay, you should be contracting them super hard and you do not let go of that until you rack the weight. Okay, I don't care whether you're doing a max, rep work, speed work. The idea is all the same. And you guys will watch me set up the speed stuff here. You'll notice that I do that. I dig those feet in. And I had to do on that day, I think, 12 sets, 30 seconds apart. So I had to dig in like that over and over and over with only a couple seconds. You just dig in. But notice my feet are all the way back. Quads are contracted. All right. So your legs are tight. And if you do that and you can track that correctly, your ass digs into the bench. There, your, your butt cannot lift off the bench if you do that correctly, right? If your feet are behind and you're contracting the quads, it should drive your butt into the bench. Okay, so if there's any drive, it's going to be pushing your body towards the uprights, not pushing it up in the air. Okay, this allows you to stay super tight. It allows you to have the highest neural drive. Okay, it'll give you the best muscle fiber recruitment. So we need to set those feet in. You need to be doing a leg extension. Also, when we go to unrack the weight, I just want you to notice something. Notice that I squeeze the bar. When you go to, before you even unrack a bar on a bench, you should be squeezing that bar as hard as humanly possible. You should be trying to crush that bar. People are like, well, when do you let go of that crush? When you rack it. You do not loosen up on that grip until you rack it. In fact, the bench is almost a grip exercise, okay, because you should be squeezing it tremendously hard. And, and, and I cannot understate that, of what I mean by that. Literally as hard as possible. All right, when you go to lower the weight, if you want to engage the lats correctly, okay, because you shouldn't just be dropping the weight down. To engage the lats correctly, to use them correctly on the bench, to stabilize everything. Because notice how clean even my maxes are. People are always like, wow, they're just, they're, they're very, very clean when you do them. All right? And Mike's are pretty good too. His are clean also here. They're definitely clean. Even with that big arch he sets up. But 
you need to find one of two things to engage the lats correctly. There's two different cues. One of them will work for you because if you try one and say, well, it doesn't work, then try the other. You should either be pulling the bar apart, spreading that bar, trying to pull it apart while squeezing it hard, or you break it. And people have had people say, well, what do you mean? I don't understand. It's a bar. You, you know, how do you do that? Like, well, can you take a stick and break it? If I hand you a little skinny stick off the ground, a branch, and you hold it out in front of you, in front of your chest, can you break it? Sure you can. You just twist your hands and turn them inward, right? You turn your hands inward while squeezing that branch and it'll break. Do the same thing with a bar. Because in doing that, we engage the lats on the eccentric. It will give you better control. It will give you better power. Okay? So when you think about it, what all do we have tightened up here? We have our legs, our quads, our hips, our feet. They're all dug in super tight. If our lats are fully engaged, right, and we're up on our traps like we should be, the only thing that should be in contact with the bench, even with a modest arch, should be your traps and your glutes. That's it. No other part of your back should touch. I don't care how big you are. Those are your points. Your three points of contact are feet on the floor, glutes and traps on the bench. That's it. You're grounded to that. Okay. And if you do those things, it's going to prevent a lot of the shoulder rolling and other nonsense that people have. Because if you're engaging those lats, it's going to keep those shoulders back. So we get tight with all those things. After you lower it and you pause and then you go to press it up, you're not pressing the weight up. What should you be doing? You should be pushing yourself away from the bar. People say, well, I don't understand. I'm pushing the bar. No, no, no. But you need to visualize pushing yourself away from that bar. You drive your traps and your glutes into the bench as hard as you can. And so what's the purpose of doing all this? People will say, well, look, it's three muscles move it. It's the pecs, the delts, and the triceps. And you're right. Those are your primary movers. And if you get those muscles bigger and stronger, your bench is going to go up, right? You show me a guy with big-ass triceps, big delts, and big pecs, and I'll show you a guy who can bench some serious weight, even with bad form. But if we want to be efficient, if we want to have the best neural drive, what do we need to do? We need to get that irradiation effect by having our entire body tight so that when we drive, we have more neural drive. We return on more muscle fibers faster. Okay, so that applies not just to maxing, but the same thing for people who want to build more muscle benching. If you recruit more muscle fibers on every rep, and of course you're then stronger also because of it, it means your 10 rep max will be bigger. It's going to happen. You're going to grow more. It's going to be a better hypertrophy exercise too. So think of it that way. You need to be using your entire body isometrically when you bench press. Think of it as a full body isometric exercise. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.